Responsible tourism is a term that gets thrown around a lot these days. But what does it mean to be responsible? Who needs to be responsible? Why do we need to be responsible? What's it all about? There is no denying the increased recognition of the need to be more sustainable by tourism industry stakeholders. But the reality is that whilst of us are familiar with the term responsible tourism, we don't really know what it entails. So I'm going to delve deep into it in this video today. Stay tuned to learn more. If you're new here, my name's Dr. Hayley Stainton, and I'm here to teach you everything travel and tourism. In recent years, there has been a clear shift away from the desire to embark on a traditional package holiday, which focuses on the concepts of sun, sea, and sand, towards more experiential travel. Nowadays, many consumers are in search of holidays that provide them with more than a two weeks on a beach, and instead they are seeking deeper, immersive experiences where there is a greater focus on sustainability. This is coupled with a general trend towards more sustainable living and a greater awareness of the impacts of our actions on society and the natural environment. In essence, responsible tourism is tourism that exhibits responsible behaviour, both in terms of the tourist and their actions, but also in terms of the industry and how the industry is managed. Responsible tourism has become an established area of tourism research and it's practically become a household term. However, this term is pretty subjective and poorly understood in some contexts. The definition of responsible tourism, both in theory and practice, has been subject of debate for many years. The problem lies with the inherent subjectivity surrounding the term responsible, because what one person might think is responsible, another person might not. Whilst many academics and industry practitioners have attempted to define the term responsible tourism, the most referenced source when it comes to defining it remains to be the Cape Town Declaration, who characterise responsible tourism in terms of the following. Minimising impacts, generating economic benefits for host communities, involving local people in decision making, conserving natural and cultural heritage, providing meaningful connections between tourists and local people, and being accessible and culturally sensitive. In other words, you need to do all those things in order to be responsible. A lot of people will ask about the difference between sustainable tourism and responsible tourism, and the term is actually often used interchangeably. But they are actually two different things. Although the term responsible tourism does share much in common with sustainable tourism, ecotourism, ethical tourism, and other forms of socially conscious tourism, it is not the same. This can be quite confusing because oftentimes the terms are used interchangeably, but they shouldn't be. As I explain in detail in my video on sustainable tourism, there are three pillars, the environment, society, and the economy. And the World Tourism Organization says that in order to be sustainable tourism, you should make optimal use of the environmental resources that constitute a key element in tourism development maintaining essential ecological processes and helping to conserve natural heritage and biodiversity, respect the social cultural authenticity of host communities, conserve their built and living heritage and traditional values and contribute to intercultural understanding and tolerance, and ensure viable long-term economic operations, providing socio-economic benefits to all stakeholders that are fairly distributed including stable employment and income earning opportunities and social services to host communities and contributing to poverty alleviation. So whilst there are very clear guidance or sort of protocols determining whether something is sustainable tourism, that is not the case for responsible tourism. So in other words, responsible tourism might encompass some of those things I just mentioned, or it might not. The concept of responsible tourism may be in the public mind more now than ever before, but it is not new. The vision of a more responsible form of tourism was discussed at length back in the 1980s, and it became an important element within the fast emerging concept of sustainable tourism. More than 25 years ago, it was noted that the industry would have to adopt more environmentally orientated and socially responsible practices. Yet this has only really become prominent in the past decade. According to a study undertaken by Booking.com in 2020, over half of tourists around the world want to travel more sustainably in future. 
The company, along with many other industry professionals, expects to see a more eco-conscious mindset in future years. Whilst there was a general shift towards a more sustainable mindset anyway, I expect this has been amplified by the COVID pandemic as coronavirus amped people's awareness of the impact on the environment and local communities. Nowadays, the label of responsible tourism is by far the most well-used sustainability-focused term throughout the travel and tourism industry. In fact, a study undertaken in 2009 by SNV suggests that tour operators are almost five times as likely to use the term responsible tourism than any other similar label, such as ecotourism, sustainable tourism, ethical tourism. Sadly, the subjectivity of the term does allow room for the term itself to be exploited and for greenwashing to occur. But I think that is a discussion for another day. So let's summarize then why responsible tourism is so important. The United Nations World Tourism Organization Secretary General quite rightly said that sustainability must no longer be a niche part of tourism, but the new form for every part of our sector. That means an opportunity to build back better and create an industry that is more resilient and aligned with the UN's Sustainable Development Goals. The tourism industry is argued by many to be the biggest industry in the world, and it's been growing at such a rapid rate over the past few decades. However, as the industry has grown, so have the negative impacts that it causes. From the depths of the Amazon jungle to the Australian outback, there are few places in the world that have escaped the burgeoning growth of the travel and tourism industry. Unfortunately, in many cases, this has come at the expense of natural resources, local economies and indigenous populations. Responsible tourism is all about minimizing these negative impacts. Think erosion, littering, rises in crime, deterioration of authenticity, economic leakage, and so on. And capitalizing on the good stuff, the economic benefits, the preservation of natural areas, the promotion of culture and heritage, amongst others. Ultimately, if we want to preserve the very things that we are going to see, the beach, the mountain, the wildlife, etc., for future generations, then we need and we have to behave responsibly and sustainably. And that's why responsible tourism is, is actually not important. It's imperative. There's no choice about it. So what can the industry do to be more responsible? A key aspect to ensuring sustainable tourism is achieved is through careful planning and management. Tourism industry stakeholders at all levels, ranging from the taxi driver and the hotel staff at grassroots level, through to international organizations and national government, have an obligation to facilitate responsible tourism. There are many examples of responsible behavior from the tourism industry and what this might look like in practice. But to give you an idea, here are a few. Hire local staff. Use local products and services to minimize economic leakage. Use ethical marketing and promotion. Involve the local community in decision-making. Recycle. Have a strong sense of corporate social responsibility. Use environmentally friendly products and services. Limit economic leakage. Educate workers. Offer training and development opportunities for staff. And work together with other industry stakeholders. So before we finish up with this video, I just want to give you a few examples of really, really great responsible tourism from around the world. Footsteps Eco Lodge in the Gambia. David, the founder of Footsteps Eco Lodge, expresses how when he took a relatively cheap trip to the Gambia, he discovered that the staff at his booked hotel were only earning an average of one pound per day. David felt guilty for enjoying a holiday knowing that the locals were receiving little or no economic benefits at all from hosting him. Fast forward, and David went on to develop Footsteps Eco Lodge with a mission to improve the Gambia's trade through responsible tourism, and therefore he encourages sustainable development. In fact, one of his goals has led Footsteps to employ only from the local village and buy only local produce. Footsteps has many environmentally friendly initiatives, ranging from solar powered electricity to composting toilets. It's based far away from the main tourist areas, providing a unique and authentic holiday experience. 
the Eden Project in Cornwall. The Eden Project is another fantastic example of sustainable tourism. It was built to demonstrate the importance of plants to people and to promote the understanding of vital relationships between plants and people. It's a huge complex that welcomes a wide range of tourists from the UK and overseas. And generally, the project attracts more than a million visitors each year. The project, in fact, has annual sustainability reports too, which monitor its sustainable impact year on year. Reality Tours and Travel in India Reality Tours and Travel's mission is to provide authentic and thought-provoking local experiences through their tours and to use the profits to create change in Indian communities. Reality Tours and Travel is a social catalyst and works towards profit-sharing programs. 80% of their profits go directly to Reality Gives, which runs high-quality education programs in areas where their tours work. Reality Tours and Travel now welcomes more than 15,000 guests a year and employs over 50 members of staff. The Dolphin Discovery Centre in Western Australia. The Dolphin Discovery Centre began when Mrs Evelyn Smith began to feed a group of dolphins near her home. Following her discovery of the dolphin grouping, specialists were brought in to monitor and study the local dolphins. A few years later, the Dolphin Discovery Centre allowed tourists and community members to interact with these dolphins in hope that they would understand and enjoy the marine animals. In brief, the Dolphin Discovery Centre Adopt a Dolphin programme supports the conservation of dolphins and the broader marine environment. To date, the Dolphin Discovery Centre not only conserves dolphins, but it also conserves turtles too. Rancho Margot in Costa Rica Ranch Margot is exactly as it sounds, a ranch located in Costa Rica. It all began in 2004 when the founder of Rancho Margot, Joanne Softsteam, purchased 400 acres of pasture. Despite the land being cleared of all vegetation, he had a vision to grow sustainable food and raising animals. Today, Rancho Margot focuses specifically on sustainable production and living, from the food they deliver to their energy production and the transport they use. Rancho Margot's sustainable mission is in keeping with the Brunton Report too. They want to achieve and maintain sustainable operations, working to find better ways to satisfy their needs without compromising future generations. I'm sure there are so many examples around the world of fantastic responsible tourism initiatives and organisations. If you know any others, I'd be really interested to learn more. So let me know in the comments. But remember, responsible tourism and sustainable tourism is much more than I could possibly explain in a 10, 12 minute video. I'm not sure how long I've been talking now. Um, so I have made more. I've made more videos. So check these out to learn more about this really important part of the tourism industry.